First question is from uh, from Shantanu K. Desai. What training frequency should be applied towards stomach vacuums? Can they be done daily, or should there be a few rest days in between? Oh, good old good old fashioned stomach bodybuilder exercise. So vacuum. daily. Most. First of all, the vacuum is a great way to train the the TVA, the transverse abdominis. It's the muscle that sucks in the waist. It's actually one of the few exercises that'll actually shrink your waist if you get those muscles tighter and stronger. And it's like the body's weight belt. Um, so it's an important muscle to train, especially for uh, postpartum women yes. after having a baby. But it's it's important for everybody. Uh, because it's minimal resistance, because it's not a heavily loaded exercise, you have to create the tension yourself when you do it. It doesn't create a lot of damage, and you can practice them every single day. And what will happen over time is you'll get stronger and better at doing them. Yeah. So when you first start them, you may feel a disconnect. It may feel kind of weird. But over time, you'll get stronger and stronger and be able to generate uh, more force with them. But this is one of those few exercises. Go ahead and practice them on a daily basis. That's always how I recommend well, it. Well, wouldn't you say like training the TVA, That's you're, you're really looking for um, – the ability for you to be able to draw that in, draw that in almost subconsciously, right? Mm-hmm. We're not trying to build or bulk or like. Add I don't think a, you could with the vacuum, right? right. That's what I'm so. That's what yeah. I'm saying is like. So this is what the, the more you do that, uh, the more it becomes like re- a regular habit for you. That yeah. when you yeah. walk around, when you bend over, doing it's like thing, a natural you're, weight. Belt. Yeah, you're, you're naturally kind of drawn in and, and comfortable. Like that. I actually think that when it, when I was uh, training for the shows and stuff, like I obviously because of my stage posing and stuff, I was practicing kind of doing that all the time i never felt so good like as far as like my low back support and then my posture i started to i could tell i was carrying my posture walking around just more upright than i ever did because of how much practice i was putting into to that drawn maneuver that's the most i ever i never have cared enough to actually apply that consistently but when i had to because i was practicing posing so much i got to a place where i could tell that i was naturally and i can already tell since i haven't trained it like that frequently again i i have to more i have to be more uh actively thinking about oh yeah. i'm not i'm slouching or i'm not drawing in where i kind of have felt that i was like holding myself that way all the time when yeah, i was practicing at, at what point did it fall out of favor in like the bodybuilding community because that's really where it so you know it did from. and then it's making its way back right, right so right. ever since the the reintroduction of uh classic uh, physique that category uh, which is only like because the vacuum pose the, it's an old school bodybuilding pose you see frank right Zane where you get it. to see the ribs and everything and it's really yeah so the, it's almost like an ab pose with the hands behind the head but rather than flexing the abs they would draw in with the tva and create this like is it, super is small waist frank zane the one who's most famous for doing it yeah but they all did it, it was like i mean a, they all did but yeah. he's like most famous for that right yeah, he had so that one behind the head and but he, now you just see the turtle shell ab you know where it's so i think distended. that's why it kind of fell out of favor right they stopped doing it because everybody had pretty shitty midsections and now that new category is open. And I think, what, what do you think Classic's been around? Four or five years? I think so. It's only been about four or five it's years. It's already that- bringing in more money than traditional. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Wow. It's it's a more, I mean- Realistic. I, I say, yeah, it, with quotations because they're more, still unrealistic. More desirable physique. Yeah, they're not like so freaky looking and it's kind of harks back to the, harkens back to the old days of bodybuilding. Yeah. But yeah, it was a pose. And so people practice it and you can get better at it where you really draw in and tighten that muscle. It's extremely valuable for postpartum women. Extremely yeah. valuable because yeah. that muscle atrophies in order to make room for baby. And I remember I'd get clients postpartum and I'd say, okay, we're going to try and strengthen your TVA. And I'd have them, you know, you want to be on your hands and knees if you want a little bit of resistance from gravity. I would place my finger on their belly button and I'd say, now draw it in. And they would always be shocked that they couldn't because yeah. they lost total connection to that muscle. Yeah. And then at through practice, they were able to, to do it and it totally works. And what you'll find is if if this muscle lacks, I guess, strength and uh, instability, as you do vacuums, you'll lose like a half an inch, maybe an inch around your waist without getting in a leaner. It'll it'll make your waist smaller just because this muscle is doing more of its job. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe. <laughs>